Okay, gang, I hope you're prepared with a little bit of juice and maybe a cracker, a piece of bread. We're going to remember the broken body and the shed blood of Jesus Christ. For us, that's how we do communion. But for Jesus and the disciples, it was an actual meal, uh, a specific meal that remembered a specific event that occurred 1,400 years earlier. You know how we associate certain meals with holidays, like a Thanksgiving turkey or an Easter ham? Uh, maybe on the 4th of July, you throw some hot dogs and burgers, something on the grill, maybe ribs. Oh, well, that's what Passover was for Jesus and the disciples. The Passover was an event that freed the Hebrew slaves in Egypt. It goes back, again, 1,400 years to your Old Testament. It was the 10th and final plague. The angel of death came throughout Egypt, but he passed over the houses that demonstrated their faith in God by marking their doorposts with the blood of a lamb. From that moment on, Israel became a nation. The Hebrews were free. And from that moment on, they would always remember the Passover. So it was that Thursday, the Thursday of Passion Week, that Jesus gathers with his disciples and they're going to enjoy the Passover meal. That very night, Jesus would be arrested in the garden. It happened about midnight. And all night long, Jesus was awake because he was tried six separate times uh, for his crimes, so to speak. He was brought before the high priest Caiaphas, the previous high priest Annas, he was brought before the whole Sanhedrin of Sadducees and Pharisees. He was brought before King Herod. He was brought before Pilate, the governor from Rome, twice. And it was this second meeting with Pilate. Happened about 7 o'clock in the morning. Jesus was actually sentenced to be scourged and then crucified. So after the beating, they shackled the cross to his arms. They led him up the hill and they executed him. It happened about 9 o'clock in the morning. That's when the Bible calls the third hour because they began their day at 6 in the morning. For hours as Jesus hung on the cross, people walked by and hurled insults at him. The soldiers mocked him. The Pharisees mocked him. They said things like, you've saved others. Why can't you save yourself? If you're really the Son of God, why don't you come down from that cross? Even the criminal beside him mocked him. But somewhere around 11 in the morning, the other criminal on the other side of Jesus rebuked the first. It's recorded for us in Luke chapter 23. But the other criminal rebuked the first. Don't you fear God, he said. We are punished justly, but this man has done nothing wrong. And then he said, Jesus, remember me when you come into your kingdom. And Jesus responded to him, I tell you the truth. Today you will be with me in paradise. The Bible says that by the sixth hour, that would have been noon, that darkness covered the whole place. It was that event that Jesus was describing the night before when he took the Passover celebration and turned it into the Last Supper. They were sitting at the table. I'm sure conversation was abounding. It was a big week. And when the bread came by Jesus, he paused. He said, men... Things are about to change. This is no longer about Passover. It is the completion of Passover. It's no longer about the blood of that lamb. It's about the blood of this lamb. This bread represents my body, which is broken for you. Whenever you eat it from now on, remember me. Similarly, when the cup came around, he said, This cup now represents a new covenant between God and man. This cup no longer represents the blood of that lamb. It represents the blood of the once and for all lamb himself. Whenever you drink it, I want you to remember me. Pray with me. Father, we give thanks for your broken body, the shed blood of your Son, Jesus Christ. We pray we might live lives that reflect our faith in that great event. And we are so grateful that the story doesn't end there. Thank you for what we will remember and celebrate this coming Sunday, I pray. Amen. God bless you. I'll see you Sunday.